Hello guys, and welcome back to Strategic Command World War II World at War with our allied playthrough. In the last episode, we progressing through November 6th, I believe the exact historical start date of Operation Torch, which we are planning on doing, but we're going to be pretty late on it. We've dealt with the Soviet front after dealing with a massive Japanese naval attack, thwarting our landing on any we talk and yet giving us the opportunity to destroy the rest of the Japanese fleet carrier fleet, which there were apparently five of, and soon, hopefully, to destroy the rest of their battleships. Our invasion of Japan continues, now opening up a northern front on Hokkaido, just in case the push through the center becomes too difficult. I want to take the smarter approach as we did already lose an army off the Sea of Japan, which we have now paid to replace. I am thinking, however, of going and upgrading some more of the cores, maybe not now, but later, because it could be handy in maybe going after some islands, I don't know. And I'm still considering whether or not I want to use the two special forces I've purchased to replace the two that I've lost. Because Japan clearly isn't out of the fight yet. I really thought they'd be dying faster than Germany and Italy. They might be sharing a trajectory or given the Soviet push in the Baltics almost at Berlin already, of course, it's going to be very hard to get there. It's not like we're going to get there next turn. There is a possibility that Europe does fall before Japan and then Operation Torch becomes completely unnecessary. But seeing as no one involved in Operation Torch is actually going to be relevant in the island hopping campaign nor would be necessarily helpful in dealing with japan i'm gonna let plans go as plans go right now we have the uk and india to deal with that battleship we went looking up north for that i then decide to say hey well i guess i don't need to look for it because i got a battle cruiser and that's good enough well intelligence just found it it's right here in the middle of the Atlantic, it sailed around and down, and it's it's here. You know, it's actually very close to reaching our destroyers, and that would have been not the greatest situation for us to run into. Now, I know we were upgrading our carriers. I know not all of them are upgraded, so I will upgrade whatever ones need to be upgraded. But we are going after that goddamn fucking, what's it called? Battleship. Also, this carrier needs some aircraft recovered the formidable so how many of you can get over there well it's you guys have a range of about six yeah yeah all right so who's the furthest away you or you it's probably looks like it's gonna be you one two three four five six sadly out of range one two three four five six yeah this one's out of range this one one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's set the Ark Royal Carrier to bomber mode, get it sent down as far as it can get, and send it out to bomb the battleship. Three damage dealt. Ooh, two received on the planes. It does have anti-air capabilities, that's a thing. And we haven't upgraded our naval weaponry in a bit. Another three damage dealt, and it moves closer towards us and a little bit more sustained. Yeah, what is our naval weaponry? Only at one, there's only two levels of it though. Losing planes to kill a battleship is a lot cheaper than hurting our own battleships to kill a battleship so therefore uh well are you too far away now one two three four five six oh just barely it chose to flee towards us which is probably the weirdest part of this we do have one more carrier that can reach one two three four five six okay well let's go ahead and put you in bomber mode before i forget so one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go right over here and bomb you. Dealt three damage, took no damage, bomb it again. And voila! A German battleship wiped out. Two more damage taken to the crews, unfortunately. But that's pretty good to me. That ups the UK's national morale, which is still at 99%, and lowers the Germans, which is still at 92%, despite everything that's been going wrong for them. They are quite content with the way of things. Let's send the Belfast Light Cruiser and the Southampton out here. Well, we'll might go a little bit excessive in this regard, to be honest. Uh, we can get this carrier 
to not be where it is, but I might hold off on that. I know I want to get some kind of screens over here. We have a lot of screens that are committed to another task over here, though. We finally got that damn submarine out of the way. Although, to where it went, I'm unsure. We can go looking down in this direction. It's not along this line, at least. I'm not quite sure to where it could have run to. We can go looking. Well, at the very least, we know it's not in this general region. Yeah, so over here is safe. So we can fan out the Canadian destroyers that are defending these waterways again. Send one up. Oh, whoa, hey. Oh, that's a new one. Oh, God, that's a new one. Took a good bit of damage to the ass destroyer. Oh, not the ass destroyer. This is why I was sending screens. Especially having seen the AI's willingness to just show up in the stupidest fucking place possible and risk everything that they have over something that's not going to help them just to do damage, I've learned the value. I also saw it with the carriers, right? Because I saw it at Pearl. They did the same thing at Pearl. And now that I've seen it twice, I've really learned my lesson. A player, not very likely to just waste shit like this, but an AI, very likely to do whatever the fuck it needs to do to get whatever damage it can get in on whatever target presents itself. Now, a lot of my uh, cruisers and stuff are over here trying to get ASW, which I will go ahead and give them right now with my money before I put any money into anything else. There you go. Anything else up north? No, sadly. All right. Well, we have to spare some ships, clearly to go deal with this motherfucker. Let's send the Ass Destroyer back a touch and send the Columbia Destroyer in. Let's go ahead, perform some ASW, dealing two damage and taking two. Their subs are pretty advanced and our ASW has not advanced in a long time, but it's very close. It's very close. Our ASW efforts in general in the war are just pretty bad. It, I think it's something I might've put off a little at the beginning. I don't remember. I remember being very stretched thin, though, at the beginning. Let's go ahead and send the Montgomery Destroyer up. And have that perform some ASW. Dealing two damage. Taking two damage. All these equal blows are quite infuriating. Mm. And especially the worst part about this is the fact that nobody else is in range to reach this motherfucker. <laughs> so he might get away. But he can't do very much. They're losing their operational, like, capability over here. As St. Nazaire is not going to last very long. They have Spain. They have Spain. But the Indians are coming. The Indians are coming. Not the British. The British aren't coming. The Indians are coming. I'll leave all the rest of this stuff back here where it's safe. I guess I'm using a battle cruiser screen again on both sides. Not the most ideal thing, but it's something. We are raiding both of their points here. The Soviet... Submarine, I forgot to point out, is actually getting really, really experienced, I think, just by raiding. It got some good kills, too, but I think it's leveled up experience just by raiding as well. Now, uh, we do have, wow, amazing range. Look at this. To look to the south and see if there's anything over there, we can also... Ooh, we're not very likely to find a lot over here, to be honest, but you never know. Guess I'll just keep looking kind of southwestish. Let's go. Might as well scout if I have the capability. We might have something better we could upgrade this to. Our time bombers. Okay, no. It's actually max upgraded. Never mind. We do have other things to worry about, though. So, is this pretty much figured out? Yeah. We did get that battleship destroyed, which is nice. We're working on some more submarines. The Battle of the Atlantic is... Heated up to a point where it hasn't been in a while, quite frankly, so that's quite interesting. We had also sank that Italian ship out here in the Indian Ocean, but I guess we'll deal with that momentarily. One thing to note is that the BEF and the Second Corps are both ready to be deployed at full upgrades currently. I will deploy the BEF. I guess I could put both of them around Plymouth. The supply there should be more than sufficient. And the Second Corps, they, they should border it, so they should be able to get in transports, although... They're spawning with not a lot of readiness and morale. When they get down there, they should help fill in 
what the Brits can do over here. And now we'll make sure to upgrade. Well, we don't actually need to upgrade before it gets all the way over here. However, getting this HQ over here right now would not be a simple task. I guess so long as we keep it near some of our destroyers, we should be good. We do know that there's submarines out here, but the submarines don't know where we are. So long as we proceed carefully, we should hopefully be safe. Let's go ahead and proceed over near this destroyer. Thankfully not running into anything over here. This destroyer should certainly help keep things safe, but just to be sure, we'll go ahead and unify more of these together just to try to keep that as protected as possible. Uh, I'm a little more cautious now when fighting the AI, but even against players I should be cautious. It's just that I've seen the AI be so neutral in the face of traumatic threats. Meanwhile, in the face of the tiniest of opportunities that it can inflict the tiniest of setbacks it puts everything in it's so weird anyway we do have still a large amount of enemy firepower up here in terms of air power that i'm not quite sure i want to commit our hmm, our bombers here to just yet we can upgrade the tactical bombers Ooh, look at that model change Ooh, that's looking hot all right, let's get that upgrade. Yeah, it's totally worth upgrading at the very least. Ground attack weapons, elite reinforcements for the strat bombers. We'll hold off on the bombing for now. Ooh, we can't actually reinforce this tank because supply has not caught up. St. Malo's a normal port, as is Brest. So right now we're waiting for things to catch up before we can actually reinforce anything. If we do put anything here, it's likely to get quite ganged up on. Everything over here is not going to be a simple affair to deal with. That much is certain. But if we do cut off Cherbourg, then hopefully it should receive some damage. I don't know really how much this port can provide to it. But I will move this core forward to try to cut it off. I'll swap the special forces in since that's where I'm going to want to be on the offensive. And for now, I'll just leave the first tanks here to cover this area for now. We won't be able to do very much without taking more losses just yet because we have mostly core-sized elements up here. So it's really hard to push against entrenched positions without air power, which is really, really hard to get right now. Overwhelming forces like the Soviets have, or artillery, which we just lack right now over here. Looking in Greece, the Epirus army has a good chance to deal a lot of damage to this enemy corps. So let's go ahead and attack, dealing four damage and taking none. I'd say that's pretty good. We'll swap it out with the Rhodesian special forces, who can follow up the attack, dealing another four damage, also taking no damage. This is going very well right now. Unfortunately, We'll have to try to outmaneuver our enemies to get any further than this. Holy crap, this core has like no supply right now. What the fuck? Shit, I guess the supply leading up there is just that bad, huh? Well, it's also not attached to any HQs, is it? No, it is. It is. I guess this HQ is just stretched thin. Just maintaining all this crap. Well, we would, will need to go ahead and reinforce the Athens core here. We do have room to upgrade the mobility of the Macedonian army, uh, as well as the mobility of the first corps. We want to start getting mobility as it's rather important on these fronts, if I do say so myself. We'll have to, oh, we'll go ahead and upgrade the tack bombers here. We'll go ahead, we cannot upgrade this. We can't even reinforce it due to supplies. It's actually quite bad, the supply situation. Uh, it's always been bad here. Maybe if we send it up behind all this crap, it'll get better. I don't know. The Greek fighters are going to have to start moving up now that things are shifting around the way that they are. And we're certainly getting more and more opportunities to move up north. I don't really know the situation quite over here. We don't have any recon performed. We can upgrade another one with mobility, though. I will prioritize getting upgrades more than anything. We'll take the 7th Armored Tanks and we'll go ahead and attack the enemies at Dubrovnik. Dealing 2 damage, taking 2 damage. Oh, but we have Armored Warfare now, meaning we can attack again. Hey, attack again, yay. 2 more damage to them, 1 more damage to us. And we still have ass loads of room to move. Okay. Let's bring this down here then to free up some space because this will allow me to move more things around. We're going to move the army up, and we'll move the arty up behind it. 
Now the army can go ahead and attack Dubrovnik, dealing three damage and taking no damage. British Corps has capability to move, as do the Greeks. Right now, the Greeks on the front are being supported by the British HQ, namely. However, there are other opportunities presenting themselves elsewhere, so I'm not quite sure about what we should do with all these situations. I will, however, take the Hellenic fighters and move them up north a little bit. They need to get into a better position here. It, it would just be so easy to push up here, do you know what I mean? It would be so easy. I think I'll send the British Corps forward. And I could go for the HQ, but rather I will go to destroy the Italians here, this core. Opening up the town of Nish. Oh, I remember when we were defending this. Futilely. <laughs> I guess we will secure the town with the British Corps. That sounds good to me. So that we could move the Greek Corps up to get a nice chunk off the Franco HQ. Is this, is this supposed to be Franco himself? If so, that's fucking hilarious. Let's go take a bite out of his HQ, dealing three damage and taking none. The push is going pretty well into Yugoslavia, and Bulgaria will soon feel the wrath of the Greeks and the Brits as well. When this occurs, we will hopefully be able to secure both of these with the UK, and indeed having the USSR continue up through Romania and Hungary, leaving the southern side to us, while the USSR deals with Germany and other threats in the meantime. Certainly, if we took Italy, I don't think Paris would be enough to protect the Italians with their floundering national morale. The Germans are starting to get way down as well, 91%. It's, oh yeah, it's starting to look real, real good for us, if, if it wasn't already. The WDF army can start moving up north again. However, it cannot make a whole lot of progress moving north due to the terrain and limited mobility and weather, supply, that kind of stuff, without force marching, and I don't want to force march over here. So we're just going to drive it up through the road into Albania, and we'll have a catch-up later. Ah, even though I've already moved this unit, it can still fire. Oh no, never mind. It's just showing that it can fire, even though it can't. Well, that's not confusing at all. Moving up our Indian task force, we're going to get the Slim HQ and get that all the way over here to Tripoli. Let's see, we don't have any other closer ports. No, that's a lie. We can actually play right off of Malta now that I'm looking at it. All right, let's get the Gurkha Special Forces up to Malta as well as the BAI Army. Let's get the 5th Corps over to Benghazi. And then next turn, we'll be good to start the attack on Spain. Oh, that's going to work out pretty well. Realistically, the Americans are going to arrive too little too late for Europe which is why I am probably going to keep the Special Forces the more I look at the situation going into uh, the Pacific. Meaning I also probably don't need to get any more HQs. I don't, probably don't need to get a Patton one. The Eisenhower one's probably enough for anything I might want to do over here. Might just be completely unnecessary. Hell, we might just be able to skip right through the Mediterranean and just land directly in Italy if it really mattered. Which at this rate, it's not going to. But we'll examine things more when we get there. For now, we'll move the Desert Reconnaissance up to Tripoli. Like I said, I would just in case, so we have a guard blocker over here. Just in case we do start this war, so nothing in Tunis shows up and just absolutely destroys shit. But if we were attacking Tunis, it would be after Algiers. And we would do it like in a giant shock and awe blitz, pretty much. Uh, well, that much is done. We need the Truant Sub to keep going up, however. We're going to get that way the fuck over here as far as it can get because I ideally, even if I have to naval cruise it, I want to send it through here to confirm that there's nothing there because they've left me ample room to step off of Gibraltar here. So I'll probably get here, step off of Gibraltar with the garrison, secure the fucking dock over here, and then just start landing the Indians like crazy. Plop the HQ down in Gibraltar for now. And then just push on Madrid. And since they put everything on all these other fronts, I don't think they're really going to be able to withstand it too well. Let's go ahead and get the Sudanese that we do have moving over uh, to Greece right now. In their current state, they can make it if I naval cruise. So I think I will go ahead and do that. We'll just drop them over here at Kalamata. Yeah, I just drop them off right there. Same thing with the HQ. They can get some improvements still, but this should be good enough for now. 
We'll eventually get the other Sudanese force up there. I don't know if I'm going to even need the South Africans over here, but we'll see. For now, the Sudanese can go ahead and start moving forward. I guess they can literally just start moving forward to the best of their ability right now. Supply will be prevalent enough that I can start upgrading them from back here. Regardless, in the meantime, we can move up the second South African Corps as well as the Smut African HQ. There's not enough room at the dock when you count the Indian Heavy Artillery, but this will be leaving sooner rather than later. So we'll just go ahead and put the first Corps over here. And they're probably going to line up around this dock waiting for a good location for them to go to. Looking at India, there's not a whole lot we need to do with them. We'll go ahead and drive the 254th Indian tanks over to Karachi. Since we do have tanks, I guess I might as well go queue up Armored Warfare, as that is a tech that I can actually afford, and something that tanks could very much benefit from. Albeit, I don't know if they'll even need it. The war in Europe is really getting ready to wind down to a close. And the war in Japan, while still having them strike out, I think this is just glass cannon action. They could put up a probably decent fight to defend what they've taken over in the Philippines, maybe the DEI, maybe. However, with China being one and pouring units into Japan proper, there's just no hope for them. There really is. I mean, we can see across the river, they don't even have anything currently defending Amori. If they do have a horde of troops here that I don't know about, then we'll probably see them railing up here as soon as is possible to try to close us in. But I will try to use that gap as a defensive measure as well. So right now, we can also put some attention down here against this special forces that lay. Let's attack with the core, dealing no and taking no damage. However, enemy supply is still very low and that gets rid of their entrenchment. So we can swap in the special forces, attack, dealing two damage and taking none, which is good progress, I guess putting up more of a fight for the Japanese to deal with, despite how everything else is going in this region. I guess these American TAC bombers, I could have sworn I upgraded them, but apparently they can still go and bombard Suva, so let's go have fun with that. We took damage, and we dealt no damage. Maybe this is starting to become a little unfeasible without an HQ to provide supply over here. The UK has some MPPs left. We'll go ahead and research the next ground attack weapons. We've been completely ignoring advanced subs. We do have room for another 125 cost tech. We have a 141 remaining. There aren't any 125 cost techs, but there is anti-tank weapons for whatever that's worth. I'll go ahead and research that. I don't know if that will probably never be useful, but I might as well just fill up the research. It shouldn't be too hard to go through against the AI. I don't need to play as smart anyway. Besides, you never know how things could turn around. I mean, I didn't expect Japan to do what they did. We have now done everything with everyone that I plan on doing pretty much. Actually, that's not true because this fleet over here is... I guess needing to get back into port, so we'll go ahead and put the carrier back into fighter mode. We'll send it up to Calcutta where it's safe. Don't really know what it's going to be needed for now that the American fleet is fighting the remnants of the Japanese fleet. And the Chinese don't seem to need any help. I'll put everything back where it'll be safe for now. We'll take the DEI sub out of here and just get that. Moving up towards the Mediterranean as well for the time being. We're not going to need it against the Japs. So that we don't expend anything where we don't want to expend anything. I'm going to go ahead and start putting a lot of these ships in ports. The light cruisers can stay out here. The destroyer can go over here. We'll have... Oh, we have another destroyer over there already. Okay, cool. One heavy cruiser can come here, and we're actually perfectly using all the ports and everything over here with what we are keeping over here. Just filling the ports for the time being, and just, yeah, that's it. Just trying not to add another bill for the UK to have to deal with for the time being. Oh, and I almost forgot this. Le Lurks. Le, le Clerks. Uh, oh, look, he did find a garrison here. Let's go ahead and attack, I guess. Lowered its entrenchment a little bit. I don't know if this guy is going to be doing this all by himself. Because he did come out at strength 8. So we might just have to send him back. And call that Amphib a, a lost payment. Because yeah. I don't think he's going to be capable of this on his own. Without an HQ to allow him to get up to strength. Which means in that case. We are actually done. With everything. I don't think anything is hiding from me. 
Now I think I've done everything that I'm gonna do. Yes, all right. Well, in that case, let's hit end turn and see what those devious axes have in store for us. Soviet morale boosts as allied forces approach Berlin. Hell yeah. French partisans disrupt supply in Nancy. All right, very good. British commandos raid the Spanish coast. Well, yeah, because they're in the war now. They deserve it. Blockade Bordeaux. What's next? Oi, USA UK convoys got disrupted. Uh oh. Well, that Battle of the Atlantic's sure gonna have to rage. A lot of techs are finishing. Holy crap. Uh, they got about uh, 11 or 12 from that one. That's unfortunate. It's about the same they're getting from Australia. Thankfully, not a whole lot. We'll get them with the destroyers. We'll make them regret that. Don't worry. In the meantime, everyone looks like they're doing pretty well with their MPPs. And so now we'll see what these Germans have for us and, you know, the rest. The Germans make more MPPs than the rest of them combined, by the way, at this point. I think that... Oh, oh, he ran away. Did he die? That was weird. Well, they're running into our battleships with heavy cruisers. I wonder if they'll try to focus one battleship down. I wonder. But I think Italy makes more MPPs now than Japan does. Roughly, or they'll make the, about the same amount. Why are they moving so many things into, like, Bulgaria, Romania? Are they just abandoning Yugoslavia? What's the deal here? I understand the Russians are scary, but this is not where you should be putting things. You need them up north, because we're kind of blitzing it to Berlin. I don't quite understand AI tactics. Oh, okay. The light cruiser went north. Oh, it was looking for the carrier. You know it was. You know it was. It found our destroyer. I wonder where the battleships are going to go. That's the prize, right? Getting the two battleships in addition to three carriers? Holy fuck. This strat bombing continuing over here. Historically, they're supposed to have taken these a long time ago, man. Before even securing the whole of the DEI. This was part of it. Interceptors flying coverage. Alright. They're, they're still trying to bomb. They're giving me everything they got, man. Everything they have is being thrown at me. Oh my god, the Italian escorts at, at Copenhagen. What the fuck? What is this coordination? What is this placement? Bombing my tanks on the front around uh, Danzig, unfortunately. They're bombing my units up north on Hokkaido, but they, they can't do anything. All right, we got another core appearing up at Amori. I wonder if that's the other one or if that's a new one. Either way, if it's only a core, it's not too big of a deal. They're really trying to focus these tanks down, these specific tanks. I guess they're the heaviest tanks I have, the furthest towards Berlin. This guy actually left the town! Oh, that's so funny! He was about to run out of supply. I guess he needed to try to make it count. Uh, he's not going to get back to friendly lines like that. Okay, we got another core. Ooh, okay. Unless that's pulled directly off the south, there's definitely more in the center than I know about. Meaning... This is probably a good idea that I'm coming from the north and the south. Whew. I wonder if the fall of Germany would reduce the... Oh my god. Well, there goes a heavy cruiser. I wonder if it would reduce the morale of Japan if the European powers fell. What the fuck? Oh, hello. Okay, another battleship has shown up. Didn't realize they had more. Okay, getting a lot of things sent up here. Including a garrison. And paratroopers, they're really running out of things. Attrition losses over by Haiko. It's good to me. It's good to me. Bordeaux blockade, kind of irrelevant, but we're disrupting some of their convoys, getting them back for what they do to us. Pretty effectively, pretty evenly, actually. And yeah, all right. I didn't see where the battleships went. Huh. Quite interesting. There's a core in Madrid, good to know. It's winter now. Uh-oh, it's December. They didn't do Case Anton, probably because they're so weak. Anti-air in Rus. Interesting. Core near Antwerp. Sub in Buin, huh? Interesting. Okay. Garrison. HQ. Army. Alright, new special forces are here. Yeah, I don't know where the battleships went. They've either gone into friendly docks, or 
somehow gone around us. The AI is not that good at maneuvering, as we can see. They already forgot my battleships were here. So I'm probably able to find these other battleships. Hopefully. For now, though, that's all we have time for. And I look forward to picking up where we left off on the next one. <laughs>